in this video we're going to focus here on the iterations of basic machine learning and we're going to use brain.js for that and brain.js is really powerful and what we're going to do is we want to run through this code here and eventually you can see how many times we run through this to get a specific answer here so let's start to explore how we can work with brain.js and have a quick introduction into machine learning in this video we're going to focus on an introduction to machine learning with brain.js and brain.js is very powerful but it's a very simplified version of tensorflow and that is quite beneficial because machine learning can be very complicated and having a very uh, basic item will be very useful for you so basically this is brain.js brain.js here and it shows you a lot of information here but we're going to work with a very simple explanation to start with this we need to have a default html code here and then after it, we're going to add up here our specific uh, uh, version or, or chart. What is that? Not the chart.js library, but the library here of brain.js. And uh, what we need to do here, this is very important. Make sure you get the beta version one. Why? Because this one here, they might have some other adjustments, and I cannot find yet any documentation. Probably I have to dig through that more to find the official term here. So, and, uh, so we're going to copy this because they're right now working on a new update and they haven't been updating for a while so i'm not sure how active this eventually will become but since they have a new update just two weeks ago that's a positive sign but my goal here eventually is not to really focus only on brain.js but just give a quick introduction into machine learning because with this and artificial intelligence and then chart.js together can be very powerful and brain.js is just a very easy way to get started with Similar to chart.js, yes, that was a very easy way to start drawing charts. And I like that because the easiest way is usually the best way. And afterwards, we can always go more advanced. So what we're going to do here is very simple. And uh, what I want to do first is just explain. Because maybe you heard of artificial intelligence. You have heard of machine learning. And they are always connected to each other. But maybe you don't see the relation of that. So what is than artificial intelligence. In essence, artificial intelligence is intelligence that is artificial. All right, that makes sense. So what does that mean? Artificial would mean basic synthetic or not real intelligence, but based from data. Yes, it's a brain. It's not even a real brain, but it's an artificial brain, which is called a machine. So it's just a computer brain. That's basically what it is. That's why artificial is not a real brain as a human. It is just a brain uh, or machine that functions as a brain. So, how does artificial intelligence relate to machine learning? In this case, machine learning gives or feeds the brain, the artificial intelligence, with uh, knowledge and conclusions. Machine learning is basically this. So, imagine this. We have, uh, uh, let's say, we're going to give a formula. We have a formula, and then 1 plus 1 equals 2, and then one, uh, 2 plus 1 equals 3, etc., etc. We, we usually in computer programming we must set the formula in advance in this case we're not going to set the formula in advance the only thing what we are going to do now is grab the data that we have so let's say one plus one is two then the other three four five six seven eight nine all right so we have these numbers here this is just the data and then we say to the machine learning while well, we say machine learning we have this data and go and explore what is the pattern of this. So instead of we giving a pattern of one plus one, because that's basically the patterns, now we only give the answer and it will start to figure out what is the pattern. That pattern creates a certain form of logic or conclusion. That conclusion is what we call artificial intelligence because based on that conclusion, it learned I need to, if this happened, this is the reason or that that's what I need to do. That's basically what happens. Or if we get this data, the reason for that is because of that. So it will eventually find a formula. And this is interesting because machine learning, in the beginning, it's very basic. So many people say, well, machine learning cannot do much. Or at least if you see it, this say, well, you might say it cannot do much. But machine learning gets smarter and smarter the more data we can put in there. And the more correlations it makes because basically it makes correlations and these correlations start to create a conclusion and here's the most powerful thing if there are so many correlations so much data we can feed it in the system 
it can create patterns and, and conclusions that we as humans might not even see. They, if we study them, we might be aware of them, but we don't see them because we get because there's so many combinations possible. So that awareness is basically minimal from our point of view. And artificial intelligence would be able to see this. This is a very similar thing that if you have a dog or some like an animal and you always come back at home at a certain time, eventually the dog understands what time you will be there into uh, by intuition. And then the dog will wait in front of the door at that specific time already or, or a few minutes before that because it already knows. And then when you come in and you're so surprised, well, how did the dog know it? That's, we are so unaware of that, but the dog is aware of that. And artificial intelligence is basically that level of knowledge eventually. So understanding this is, I think, eventually very crucial because it will be really, they, they are projecting that artificial intelligence and machine learning will be bigger than the internet. And that is true because artificial intelligence could basically be online and offline. However, Let's go and really to the basics because most people will not even understand the basics and I'm also exploring currently everything here and how we can use that in a chart so we can become aware of the data that we are unaware of, which can be interesting. All right, so now what I want to do is, because enough of the theory, I want like to go really drawing in here. So let's create something really, really simple. So I'm going to give here a training data. So it's a constant training data. And this here eventually will become our data that we're going to use. So in this here now, it's just very basic. And we're just basic in a JavaScript file. There's nothing fancy in here. I do this on purpose. So let's say here we're going to do 10, comma, and then 9. We're going to deduct it. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So basically, what we would like to do, if we would have number 10 and 9, we would hope that artificial intelligence, or basically the machine learning, can make the conclusion or can get the data of number eight. And that, that's basically eventually artificial intelligence will make a conclusion that this is eventually number eight. Or it should show number eight if we have only these two. So it can start to figure out the pattern. That's what we really want to do here. Very basic. So we're going to say here constant. And let me say here network. Constant network. And let me say here new brain. And this is a brain object. And then we say recurrent. So what we need to do is we need to train the, the neural network. And the neural network is just like brain cells. Um, that is a network. And how does it connect with each other? This is basically how brain cell works. Brain cell, when you get information, you get emotion, basically, that goes in the brain. It triggers something with an electric shock. And that's why we say humans are energy. And humans radiate energy. So you give an electric shock to the brain, and that creates those those uh, tentacles. I, uh, if the right term is tendons, will will touch each other, and that's basically here. A neural network is exactly the same here. It needs to touch each other, but here's the thing: you need to practice. For example, if you hear a new word and you need to know how to pronounce it because it's very uncommon, if you practice first time, it will sound absolutely wrong. But after hundred time practicing your brain knows how to pronounce the word correctly. And this is the same thing here. So we say recurrent, so we want to practice this multiple times, or we want to practice this data multiple times so it can analyze the pattern. Now we say a dot, LSTM time stop. And this, oh, make sure that T for time is caps lock and then step as well. So basically what we're doing here is we're going to train here the long and short term memory so what we're going to do here, and time step, uh, most likely is for, will be with every specific loop that we're going to run through. I'm not able to find what's the real definition of it, but I know that I will find it very soon. So then we have here the network, which is basically the, the term above here, or the constant, network.train. Okay, we're going to train this now. So we're going to train this, and how will we train this? Well, we're going to grab here the training data. This training data here shows us the items we have, comma, and then we're going to have here some other values here. So what we're going to say here is the first one. So if you are, have ever used charts with social science, where we have SPSS, that's like a chart um, software where you analyze what we call the interval and the confidence level. And the confidence level is like 95% confident that this is correct. So this is basically the confidence level 
part here. So we say error, error threshold. So how, what would be the error? In this case, the confidence level is by default 95%. So we say this here. So we want to be 95% of chance that it is accurate. So next we say here log. What we want to do here, we're going to get the stats. And this stats, what we want to have here, we want to console log this. So we say here console.log. And then we do here stats. So the moment we do this, before you even refresh the page, I'm going to warn you, make sure you open up the console log first. If you don't do it, it will start to load and then it will it will take time before it is done. Because you will not be able to use anything of it because it takes time. This is very labor or uh, memory intensive. So if I refresh now, pay attention here what's going on. As you can see here, you can see how many times it need to iterate as I showed you with the Wait, and then you can see here the confidence level. It goes here, it goes down, then eventually it hits to the level here, and then it says, all right, I am very confident now to give a value, and the value we don't see yet, but this is after 5,270 uh, repeating or iterations. And iteration means a loop or repeating yourself. So it repeats itself 5,200 times plus just to get the correct item and this is just with numbers the bigger your data the longer it takes so this is very labor intensive so what i want to do now is we have this here and this is all fun but this means nothing what i want to do now eventually is i want to grab a data so we're going to say here console dot love and all i want is the following i want to say here the network i'm going to run what are we going to run we're going to run a test and this test will be this i want to make sure that if i will grab seven well let's say seven all up to three we're going to grab this data here. Can our can the artificial brain give us the correct answer? Which uh, number we expect here? It's number two. So let's see here now. If we refresh this and let's see what happens. At the very end, after it's done, this is iterations and its confidence level is high enough, it will show you the value here. And you can see here because there's a confidence level of 95%, it gives you 1.9. So plus plus and it's not a hundred not two but it is very close maybe you're not satisfied with this well what we could do is well we can uh, uh, basically floor this or um, or seal it and math uh, what is that uh, we're going to remove the decimals I forgot the term I'm using floor and uh, and ceiling but it is not that it is something else I will later on look for the term for it but I, I just forgot it just on the tip of my tongue uh, what we can do here is to be more accurate, we can go here to 1. So it's only 99% accuracy or confidence level that it is correct 99%. So refresh here and you can see here now the iterations might be even longer than previously. And this is quite interesting because you can see here now how smart it is. It doesn't give it any value. You can see we're passing already 5,200 iterations. It needs more to get the confidence level. And you can see the confidence level is going up and down here. It still keeps on looping just to be sure and now it starts to get closer and closer and it looks it's and there you are so now we get a value of 0 0.94 and i am to be honest kind of confused by this value because it is absolutely not what i'm expecting all right so fair enough so what i want to do here then now just let's try another one i don't know what happened here let's save this one more time and just try it again but then maybe with number four and you can see here it loops every time because what happened here basically this is a short term or well basically every time when it runs it deletes all the old data so this training data is not saving anything as well so just every time here however this is a good exercise here let's see now the confidence level because i expect it to be the right number and it takes a lot of time here so i will not do this too much but you can see, you know, it starts to go, and I hope now we have the right number. And well, it's still the confidence level, all right. So you can see here after one, 19,900 iterations, and there's a cap on the iterations of 20,000. So you almost hit the cap. But the confidence level here is 6.8. So that's all right for now. I, uh, and well, although I'm I'm as well confused that this is not what I expected. So let's go back to five. What am I missing here? Am I missing something here? Let's do it one more time. Final one, because I was really expecting matching values. 
it's trying to learn but apparently it doesn't learn correctly so let's see again what happened here and uh, we have here all right so we now get 5.7 and for some reason it recognizes it as six and it should be somewhere in the four so why this happens now i honestly have no idea all right so i want to show you one more thing here we're going to grab this here and what i want to do eventually here is to just show the full values out what will come afterwards here so let's see our neural network right now is absolutely messed up let's try this one more time let's search for something here and uh, let's see here it might, it might run here through a lot again and well you can see here it's this well we have this all here we have the stats everything is fine here let's keep on running and it takes a lot of time here but this will be the last one here eventually and i will make some other videos but i was expecting correct data for some reason i'm getting completely incorrect data or, ex or it expects something else for some reason it just doesn't see it. so let's see here what happened i want to make sure that this now works I hope this one will work. If it doesn't work, fair enough. I guess the brain here or brain JS definitely needs some more training. But this here basically is really a nice sample here. I'm going to just pause the video because I know it takes too long. All right, so it took a while after after a minute or two, it eventually came out and it had to iterate again almost twenty thousand times. However, surprisingly enough. We get the answer here, and the answer is eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And of course, you can test yourself as well to see. And why did we get this? All right, so we are halfway through here, and for some reason, it will get the eight, okay, and then we'll go down all to zero. So that's quite interesting. So I have, of course, a lot more to learn to really explore this because this can be interesting. But eventually we should move on to TensorFlow, I assume, if BrainJS is not being updated consistently. As I told you earlier, BrainJS uh, didn't have an update for a while. And eventually, just two weeks ago, there was an update, which is very positive. I, I hope they're working on it. But if it's not working on it, this is a nice introduction but for the more advanced. Because BrainJS is built on TensorFlow. So this is it for now. So, And next video, we'll cover some more items.